to Mr. Bill Samuel, director and a direct descendant of William Foyle, who established uh, the bookstore in 1903. Welcome to this microphone. Thank you. Welcome to my bookstore. One of the joys of collecting books is the lovely little bookseller label that appears on the inside of the flap uh, yes. and foils is with the open book. Yes. It's just lovely to see that yes. in a book. I wonder if you could tell me a bit about uh, the origins of that. I think it would have been in my grandfather's time. My grandfather ran the shop from 1903 till formed it till about 1950, but he was a dominant presence till he died in 63. He was a great showman, and he would have come up with the little open book green sticker, which we no longer use, of course, because if we put a sticker in, we can't return the book to the publisher. But uh, we've still got a supply of them somewhere. Mm -hmm. My guess is it dates from the 1930s. So your grandfather set up the company. What was his vision? He got into the business because he failed some exams and had some textbooks to sell and he advertised them and there was a terrific demand. But before that he'd always loved antiquarian books. And in fact, I found out only a couple of days ago that he was one of the not founder members of the Antiquarian Booksellers Association in the UK, but he joined within months of it being set up in 1906. The, the founding of the bookshop was secondhand books and secondhand academic books. So like Blackwell? And Blackwell's really. was new, pri well, largely new books. Blackwell's, of course, was Oxford-based. Yes, yeah. Uh, 25 years older than us. Um, a lovely bookstore. Yes, I was there and I interviewed Phil, who's in charge of the first edition section. Uh, okay. It's a lovely store. It is. It's a, and the a huge family. basement. Yeah. Good entertainment value. Always squabbling. But nice people. Um, and and, and it stayed in their family as well, which is totally. so wonderful. And that's so what's yes. wonderful about your yes. company, too. Yes. Well, we're... Christopher Foyle, my cousin, who's our chairman, and I are, we're only the third generation and we only got involved six years ago when Christina Foyle died. Christina would be Christopher's mother? No, no, no. it's our, our mutual aunt who had no children. We're both nephews. My mother was the eldest child and his father was the youngest. I, I've been working with Christopher for six years, but I've known him for 63 years since he was born. And we get on remarkably well. But we are, as I said, third generation. The first two generations having spanned 95 years. It's quite extraordinary to have only two chief executives. They went by different titles, of course, but in 95 years. And we took over as old men for approaching retirement. <laughs> because what? Because you, you you were serving as a bridge for the next generation, I hope. Well, I yes, I hope. I hope. I mean, we we stepped in because there was absolutely no provision made in Christina's will or Christina's actions for any succession plan. That has lawyers salivating too, doesn't it? Because they always talk about things like, "Oh, you've got to plan for." Of course, is it? Yeah. I know. No, she left her entire estate to charity. Set up what is now called the Foyle Foundation, which is worth many tens of millions and gives away a lot of money every year to, in the interest of education, literacy, health and the arts. Yes, now my generation are the only shareholders. Yes, succession is high on the agenda, but we took over a very run-down business and it took us two or three years to really get to grips with where we were going to go. And we've got a fairly clear idea of where we want to go, but not yet a totally clear idea of who's gonna who's gonna do it. Where do you want to go? I would love us to be the finest bookstore in the world. And it would be the biggest if the dreams come true. Okay, what what I defines think, finest? It has got to be something that attracts people attracts book lovers, attracts non book lovers. It's got to be a a destination for things happening, author events. But we also have musical events here. We have a nice jazz cafe on the first floor. We have an art gallery. We are expanding our music. We've always been heavily into the sale of sheet music and at one stage the sale of musical instruments in the 1930s. Mm. Sale of recorded music, of course. A cultural center that is based on books. And around books will sell other, other things as well. 
Yeah, as opposed to a big box that's just going to make you profit. Box, right. A big library. Or a big, rather bland lifestyle offer. And I'm talking borders. Yeah. Great shops, but I would rather not be seen as lifestyle. I'd rather be seen as entertainment and culture. That sounds rather grandiose. It's not meant to. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful vision. But just, yeah, something that pulls people in. Mm -hmm. And we have the potential to do it. We have a worldwide reputation. You do, yeah. Yeah, well, it is a destination. I mean, for book lovers, it is. I know you're you're rushed, so uh, I do want to talk about the you know the, the facts that that you took over the company when it was in somewhat of a disarray. One of the reputations that Foils has as being huge and very very disorganized and messy. Uh, I didn't see too much of that when we came into store now. So uh, I should say though, I'm not saying that in a derogatory fashion. You know, one of the things that book lovers love is sort of messy digging yes. around, uh, you know, finding little gems here and there. Yes. And, uh, so we, no more gems in the store? Oh, there are gems. There are gems, but we now we know what we've got. We've got state-of-the-art stock control software, repos systems. It's beautifully shelved, beautifully presented. Mm. The gems are there, but the gems are actually on display. You can no longer mine for gems in foils. You used to be able to. It's tragic. It is tragic. And some people... Like, we love to treasure hunt. And I know. So that you, you've found all the treasure. We found all the treasure. Damn it. We found some dross as well. But um, we had to haul ourselves into the 21st century. Some customers have regretted it yes. and told us so. But I'd say compliments outnumber criticisms by 20 to 1. Okay. A quick comment on the industry uh, as it is today and State how of flux. State of flux because it, of the internet. Uh, migration to the internet. And I have no, no problem with the internet. I, I think Amazon and others are fantastic sites mm -hmm. and do a great job. If you know the book you want and you want it quickly and efficiently, and moderately cheaply, Amazon is fine. If you want to come and do some comparisons, if you just love books, touching them, then you go to a bookshop. Yeah, okay. And there'll always be the dual route to market. We've got an adequate website, foils.com or foils.co.uk. Do you sell the used as well as new now? No, no. no. Well, okay. we have used on our shelves uh, to fill out range. We're in our specialist departments. And we, we are expanding our offer of used. But we're thinking about antiquarian again. We always used to end That would be great. That, that, that would be wonderful. Well, yeah. watch this space. Watch this space. We'll do that. And uh, any parting words to the, uh, the listening public about foils? Uh, what, what can they expect? If, if you're in London, just come along. Ask if any of the directors are home. Neither of us have a full-time job. We love showing people around. And I, I mean that I'm totally sincerely. I, I spend a quarter of my time here showing people around, and I love it. That's because we've got terrific staff who, who run the business, and I, I can just relax. That's fabulous. Well, thanks for this relaxed session, and I uh, look forward, hopefully, perhaps, to uh, encountering you again with, uh, with this same microphone. Pleasure, Nigel. Come back sometime.